Good day and welcome to episode three of the self-service edition of MKTG 2032. Shadowhawkers, good to have you on board. Glad that we're able to make this happen for you. And let's get into talking about this week's topic, consumer behavior. Now, there's a couple of things I want to say from the outset. We're seeing a lot of crossover into market segmentation theory in this episode. The reason for this is that I want you to go beyond thinking about segmentation in terms of a thing you write about in a, an assignment to being a tool that you use to make some decisions for yourself. You also know that consumer behavior as a general practice links in really well to things like strategic decision-making tools like the Ansoft Matrix. In the Ansoft Matrix, you ask the question, existing customer or new customer? Well, if you've got an existing customer, then there's some consumer behavior theory already in place. And then if you're going the existing customer, it's do you create something new for that group or do you sell them more of what you're currently doing? So there's a bunch of CB theory picking up there. There are two exercises that will be able to be done in a live learning, interactive group forum space that can't be done on your own. And I'm sorry about that, but that's that. Uh, you have to team up with people in the forums or you know find a friend as always a reminder about uh, content drift if it happens it happens quick context we've gone the fundamental principles we've just talked about what your goals what your ambitions are what you want to do with the project we're now into who's the project for and also we're going to start getting you to think about some of the technique elements that you need to use inside the project documentation so practice practice is good uh, as always, content's up on the Waddle site, Slido's out on the side there. This is a new thing we're going to start bringing in, is the post-seminar actions. Talking about the self-service internship and talking about what to do and what should be on your radar. The self-service internship, this is the project that you are going to... The ET is going to tell me about what it is you're going to spend 10 to 12 weeks working on. It is open to you for what it is you want to create. There's the big book of projects, uh, guidelines of different platforms, protocols, ideas. You can use some of those. You can come up with your own thing. Functionally, co-creation of value happens when you go and say, here is an opportunity, the project, and I'm going to combine it with what my interests are, me personally as a consumer, and make the two together into something that benefits you over 10 weeks that you can document so I get a really neat assignment at the end. But to get there, we're going to have to ask a few questions. And one of the first questions we're going to ask is, who are we as an audience? Who are we as individuals? What's our market segment? What, how can we describe ourselves? Then we can start thinking about things like, when we're creating content, who are we creating for? And I want to briefly mention right now is that you are a market segment. The Shadow Hawkers are a distinct market inside MKTG 2032. And I had you in mind, and my imagining of you as a target audience are people who are unable to go to class on Monday. So you're in effect almost an exclusionary audience of there's the inclusionary people who can access the function of Monday. People who can access the live events on Monday and the people who can't. So that's my 50-50. That's, that's my first thing is if you can make it, if you can't make it to Monday, well shadow sessions are designed to assist you. So that is in itself, uh, you are part of a market segment, so you already have a couple of identifying attributes. But what I also want to talk to you about is that market segmentation is based on decision making, and decisions need to be made so that consequences can happen, so that you can benefit from the consequence of the decision. And those consequences are good, but that's the thing you're going to have to do. Is a lot of students is the fear of missing out. If you don't make the decision, you are going to miss out. You automatically miss out. The opportunity cost of no decision is, in fact, making a, it's making a choice not to get the benefit of a proactive decision. You are going to be asked to create a project, to pick a platform, to use the site. Picking the platform requires you to make a decision. That decision has the targeting a specific audience has the consequence of it's going to be much easier to do what you want to do because you know who you're targeting and who you're doing it for. But if you decide to default back to, oh, I'm not going to make a decision. Uh, I've got two equally weighted things. What if I pick the wrong one? 
you will guarantee to pick the wrong one if you don't choose. But when you choose, you pick the right one because that's the one you're working on and your effort's going into and that's the correct choice. Your logic gate here isn't retrospective. Your logic gate here is proactive. If I don't choose, therefore I have failed. If I do choose, therefore I have succeeded. Apologies in advance here. Um, the first part of this exercise is useful. It's about the self-documentation, it's about the self-analysis, it's about the understanding market segmentation as an applied tool by applying it to yourself. Start with those first basic questions. So, start the timer and pause the video. Welcome back. Now, decisions have consequences. Who you are as a consumer is really important because one of the questions you're going to be asked is about the platform that you choose to use. So I'm using YouTube and I am a university academic in their late 40s who doesn't fit the profile, the creative profile. I don't fit the audience. But that's okay because I'm not using YouTube in that manner. I'm not using it as a 20-something um, lifestyle vlogger. I'm using it as a nearly 50 academic who needs a distribution channel. Documentation, write it down. Second exercise, speaking of technologies, I want you to go load up Instagram. Now, if you don't have an Instagram account, it's good. you don't need one, but it could be useful. And you're not forced, okay, uh, asterisk. Over the course of this subject, I'm gonna ask you to run a project on a live internet platform. I am picking Instagram as a platform because I drew lots out of a barrel and Instagram was the one that came. No other reason. No no useful like oh you know Stephen has chosen Instagram therefore I must do Instagram none of that do what you want if you want to use Instagram sweet do it if you hate Instagram sweet don't do it I don't care I want you to use your judgment as to what you want for your plan so with those caveats in mind I'm asking you to practice a task and there are three tasks in here one of which may not be able to be done but that's consequence decision time task number one in it's a three by five um, so I'm going to suggest to you that you get the word document up you look at it your first task is direct research your second task is secondary and your third task is primary in this I am asking you to find I, I want you to look at Instagram and go who is the target audience for Instagram I want you to find out if Instagram themselves has a target market in mind, uh, if they've stated the target market, if there's any official word as to who Instagram thinks Instagram is for. Your second task is do other people say who Instagram is for? Are there secondary data sources out there, blogs, reports, business reports, whatevers, that say Instagram has a profile and then profiles them? I want you to go out, spend five minutes, see if you can find that. Now the third thing is, if you do use Instagram, how you fit Instagram profile? What what makes you an Instagrammer? What makes you um, fit the Instagram profile audience? Or as you are the audience, are you in fact the audience? Like that's a question. What describe yourself as an audience of Instagram? Are you a heavy user, light user, medium user? What's your situation? Now if you don't use Instagram, then you are an antithesis audience, or are you in fact an audience? How do I not match the product? However it goes, it is three sets of five minutes. Uh, start the five minute timer and pause the video. Let's get this underway. Welcome back, mates. I hope that was, uh, I hope that was an interesting task for you because that exercise in 15 minutes is very close to what I want you to do inside the e-technology engagement analysis. You are going to be tasked in your assignment with profiling the platform and profiling whether you fit the platform. Now I'm waiting for the day someone gets out there and says, listen, I want to make a Gen X platform. I want a platform for people who are hitting the 50s, the gray is coming through like a streak of silver and they still try and dance to 80s hits. Now your fourth exercise here, again, I'm going to send you back on a 15 minute because there's a little bit of a heavier lifting. I want you to use the Google Scholar platform. If you can't access Google, uh, can't access Google Scholar, use the ANU Super Search. What I want you to do with Google Scholar is I want you to go and find a research paper, a peer-reviewed journal article 
that talks about Instagram's target market. I then want you to tell me what that paper says is Instagram's target market. You can compare and contrast against the other, against the direct, the secondary, and the primary. But very specifically, I want you to make use of Google Scholar in 15 minutes to find a paper. Compare and contrast. Do you match the market as identified in that paper? It's uh, the 15 minute timer. Load up Google Scholar and I'll see you on the return leg. Welcome back. Also, Google Scholar is awesome. Google Scholar is has a couple of magic buttons on there and the little um, inverted commas, double apostrophe set, the site button makes reference so much. Life gets sweeter. Not just Google, but Google Scholar. And when you use Scholar, look for the platform you're using. Look for the product you're trying to make. Look to find the theory that can help you understand the task you're about to do and what you can learn from the knowledge of others. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, you don't, unless that's your channel. If you're doing reinventing the wheel uh, on YouTube, cool, let me know. Uh, I've got some wheel ideas on my own. If you are using what we know. If you go out and use Google Scholar to find what has been done on the platform that you want to use, you can build on that. And we're going to integrate theory throughout the course because theory helps drive. And they say there's nothing as practical as a good theory. You are living customer co-creation of value by using the Word document to respond to the prompts on the video here. That's awesome. It's awesome that it's described and it's awesome that I've been able to use these frameworks to give you a chance to do this course by the remote access because I've got a theory body that says, yeah, it can be done and people can thrive doing it. Start a thread about the platform. If there isn't a thread already out there, start a thread about the platform you want to use and start trading resources and guides and hints. If you're going to go out and be, uh, want to be a YouTube sensation and you want to start making YouTube videos, there's a lot of good stuff on editing and timing and phrasing. There's a lot of good stuff out there on how to be creative with Canva. Start sharing resources. Start building up a resource base collectively because you're going to thrive together and you're going to succeed together. It's not a zero-sum game. You don't have to undercut your opponents. You don't have to undercut your fellow classmates. But you can collaborate. You can have your projects support each other and you can support each other to build something bigger than just yourself. And that's one of the things we're going to aim for in the season. Shadows, my friends, you are out here doing the course. Get in the forum so that we can work with you. We, we can support you and we can interact with you. Because love to hear from you, love to see what you've got to say and love to see you uh, drive a bunch of the traffic because you're in the box seat. You get to do this, these exercises at your pace, your style, your way. Whereas our mates over on the Monday nights, geez, I push them hard. They have everything, everything's got to be real time. Those five minutes, you don't get a second shot at them on the real times, on the lives. So, as always, your contact points. If you need me, you can get me that way. And otherwise, uh, cheers, mates. Job done. Have a good one.